right, Amanda, I see your hand and I'm gonna unmute you. Hey, can you hear me now? I can. Yay, so did you know that all the patron computers and staff computers, their microphones are disabled and it's not even on our end. So I learned something new uh, <laughs> last week. Um, so I really like the idea of doing programs outdoors in the sense of, you know, like how church events, you do it in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to know if anybody had done it because we, um, Plant City is owned by the city of Plant City. So our library is part of the cooperative. But um, also, if you would like to be a library director, um, we need one like now. That'd be great. Um, anyways, the logistics of doing it outdoors. Um, has anybody actually done an outdoor event before where it involved? I guess what I'm asking is who was the guinea pig? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Have you actually personally done one? No, all of my programming was always inside. Or it was at like a school or something like that where the logistics weren't. So complicated? Weren't, weren't my responsibility. <laughs> they weren't my complication. <laughs> I was checking to see, I know we had Rebecca from Wakulla County in for our Q&A earlier. I was hoping she'd be here because her library, Wakulla County, they do story walk every year and it has turned into this huge event in her county. Um, and Where is that county? Uh, Wakulla County, it's about 20 minutes south of us here in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. so smaller, more rural. Um, and so I know that the first year, I mean, it has just grown every year. Right. I actually know you're talking about. I just didn't know location-wise. Because it seems if I go below Central Florida, there's nothing but virtual. And then, like in Georgia, they're like, oh, yeah, we'll plan a July 4th event. And I'm like, y'all crazy. So. So Jenny said, I had asked about doing an outdoor program once and was told no. I think there were insurance issues. Oh, that's a good point. Because I know it, the way my library was set up, our only outdoor space would have been the parking lot. Yeah. And we didn't have any sort of public parking close enough that we could take away our parking lot space. So we typically, right. we avoided it. But um, Nancy said, we've done egg hunts and science experiments and sidewalk chalk. Amy said, I've done small festival style in the past. My big issues were power, rain, fire ants, and flow. Also, water stations are a must. And Sally, hi, Sally. Sally said, Wakulla County yeah. was also looking into doing a story time in the parking lot with patrons in their cars, maybe using radio or something. Rebecca would be a good person to ask. Yeah. They're also doing a um, drive-through bingo program. Not I don't think it's related to summer reading. It might be. Um, Amy said, in addition to access to bathrooms, right. these days you will need hand sanitizer stations. Marlene said, I did some outdoor programs several years ago because of storm damage to our building. It was not good. Heat and humidity and bathroom access were all factors. It seems like one of those things that's better in theory than actuality. I'm thinking it's just curbside sucks and I need to do something that's not curbside or phone. Well, so and the other, yeah, and the other thing, and maybe the group will have some great ideas on this, is because of, you know, how we're collecting statistics this year and, prop, you know, and moving forward, we are, have you been in any of those conversations about statistics I, this year? Uh, I did the one last week on Tuesday, okay. the stats. Yes. So the great thing is if you're trying to look at creating some sort of an outdoor program, then maybe mm -hmm. there's a way to do it where it's set up in a more self-directed Yeah, method. like how they're doing the distance learning. Hey, go paint some shapes outside and then show me. Yeah, or, you know, the community-wide scavenger hunts, 
somehow related to the thing or something. Right. So there may be a way to do something outdoor where it doesn't require patrons or staff having to be outside during a certain time. So then maybe um, that would sort of take some of that logistical burden off your shoulders. Right. And, you know, if it's raining at two o'clock on a Wednesday, it's not a big deal because they can still do it at nine o'clock on Thursday. Right. Karen said, I saw one on Facebook with shaving cream, food coloring, paint. Yeah, I've done the shaving cream where you put um, like red on one side of the tray and then blue on the other. And then you make what in the middle? Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all are all adults. I take that back. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. Karen also said they would match the index cards paper once the shaving cream and the food coloring had been mixed. It's art. The messier, the better. <laughs> Karen said, then you scrape the shaving cream onto a baking tray with foil with a card. Um, Nancy said, we're currently trying to do a video tour of our city facilities. It's kind of a scavenger hunt. Very cool. Karen said, I was planning on doing a castle playtime after story time with a little playhouse from Target. Aw. Chris said, this summer doing some virtual story time at county parks will be pre-recorded and emphasis emphasize the story of the park, special features, and natural history. And Karen said, we're doing virtual using WebEx, just got training to do. Yeah, I know virtual story times are definitely, definitely a popular thing. Nancy said, I've done bingo on FaceTime Live. Nancy, do you want to share a little bit about how you set that up? And Chris asked how that went. Do you have audio? I've unmuted you. So if you want to try, you look like you have yourself muted. Karen said, I've seen a lot of escape rooms online using Google Forms. Yes, virtual. Virtual escape rooms. So I don't know that Nancy has audio. <laughs> well, do you want to share in chat, Nancy, just kind of about how you set that up and how you how you've worked that. And Amanda, you sent that message just to me, so I'm going to read it out loud so that um, everybody can hear. Um, Amanda asked, has anyone tried a pen pal program? The barriers would be the cost of post, uh, <laughs> not potions, <laughs> those darn potions. Uh, the barriers would be the cost of postage and parent permissions. Karen said, I was going to also do a vision board with cardstock, magazines, and feathers, and of course, glue. And Karen, if you're looking for a way to do that uh, virtually, I know, Sally, I'm going to put you on the spot because you have an app for that, <laughs> right? That you shared during your workshop presentations. Oh, I'm unmuted, I think. You are unmuted. Well, you can hear me. Okay. Um, well, so we're we are also going to do um, vision boards. I think at the end for the teens, um, and then we're going to use it's Adobe Scan is the app that like scans the whole page, and then you can email it or share it. It turns it into a PDF really easily. Um, so I think that's the app you were talking about. Yes. But it would also, now that I'm thinking about it, it'd be cool to have like people just make digital um, ones like in paint or 
even like PowerPoint or Word where you just like crop pictures and put them in there if you couldn't have like materials. It's kind of interesting. Or one of those, you know, again, kind of self-directed where families can do it at home and then submit it in and get showcased. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Nancy said, I have the main bingo cage and the viewers use their own cards. Amy said, one of my crew, uh, one of my crew is a pen pal program. I think we had some auto correcting. Uh, with a colleague at another library for safety it worked well but was discontinued for staffing reasons did i need to make my chat box bigger <laughs> karen said fairy rocks would have been so cool or houses oh nancy you're ready to try the microphone let me let me find you and unmute you All right, Nancy, you're unmuted on my end. You're still showing self-muted. Lydia, I see your hand is up also. I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. You are also showing a self-muted. So if you click the little green microphone right next to your name in the attendee list, that will unmute you. Okay. Oh, and Lydia said, Lydia said, uh, hi, y'all, no microphone here. I'm Lydia with the Museum of Florida History, and we do summer reading programming in July based on the CSLP annual theme. We had already created a list of books for folks to use per age range with a Florida focus on the theme. We try to do more nonfiction usually, but this year has been interesting as I've come up with pro uh, programming. Great. Yeah, Lydia is one of our one of our Department of State partners. Nancy, are you able to? I see you're unmuted. And Marlene, I do see your question. I am gonna get to it. I promise. browsers all right so Marlene's question is is anyone doing a regular style program but limiting the number of children to stay within social distancing regulations so while people are pondering that question Um, Chris asked Lydia, will you be sending us the list? Lydia also said, we usually have a reader once a week and an activity, so we have the activities and we're probably going to live stream the readings. And Lydia said, yes, our pamphlet is in routing and I'll get it out as soon as I can. Um, and then I will definitely, once I see that come through as well, Lydia, if you can send that to me, then I can also send that out to my, my big list. Jenny said, no in-person programs at least through August 1st. Is anybody doing, um, take home craft kits or activity kits. 
Anthony said, right now I'm planning online only programs for summer. Lydia said, oh yes, I want people to enjoy the coloring book pages I've made for all my little themes. Aww. Nancy said, bingo is possible if the viewer has their own cards and it's done via live. It looks like, so far it looks like nobody in here is planning face-to-face. -face. Amanda said, I'm doing drive up for crafts and books. Crystal also said, yes, take home craft kits, putting them in Ziploc bags. Karen said, somehow we're supposed to have our prizes for the summer given to the kids. It's going to be weird. This is definitely going to be a uh, summer to remember. Sally, I'm unmuting you now. I see your hand up. Oh, hey. Um, so, yeah, we are talking about doing kit. And obviously, I think like a lot of people were kind of scrambling. <laughs> um, but we're hoping to do adventure bags. Um, and they'd be weekly and based off of like a fairy tale theme and have like some paper like things, easy things to just print off and put in there, but like an actual physical activity that they can do too. Great. And I will say I'm working on getting this email out um, for any of our if you are at a library that receives a summer reading allotment, I'm about to send an email out because I have some leftover money <laughs> that needs to get spent through CSLP um, and they still have bags left. And so I wanted to open it up to buy additional bags for the libraries who receive that allotment because I know many of you are now doing a lot of take home activity kits. So having a, a bag to package things up might be helpful. Nancy said we're doing bags in page turner adventures. Megan said I'm doing craft and activity kits based on the theme of my virtual story time. Lydia said our activities will be downloadable but we might be able to have pickup kits. We've done non-summer reading stuff already before our building closed. Amanda said, I'll have a sheet, and if they need scissors, crayons, they will get one supply kit, but weekly the craft bag will change. Karen said, thankfully, we're not going to have our summer workers, teens who work for the county part-time. Um, not sure about our food program through Meals on Wheels. Nancy said, I think we're going to draw, uh, do drawing for all at the end of summer instead of a traditional store. And Amanda said the bags will be paper, instructions, specific craft craft items like a tiny terracotta pot, but will not include scissors and crayons weekly. And again, if y'all have a microphone, please feel free to raise your hand. I am happy to unmute you so you don't have to just listen to my voice for an hour. Karen said we're not sure how it's all going to work in regards to the performers we have booked. All are interested who can do it. or are willing to learn. Um, we have lots of bags from last year, but the bags were thin and kind of small. So speaking of performers, is anybody still working with any other performers to create any kind of content, whether virtual or anything like that? Nancy said, we'll be doing some virtual 4-H events. Oh, very cool. Do you know um, what, kind of, what kind of events for that yet, or are y'all still trying to figure it out? And Karen said, um, we have a group committee who's working on, and we're getting the information down the pipeline. Amy said, we're trying to get our reading dogs on camera. Dogs are always a win. <laughs> if you do, please share the video, tag us in it. And it's not purely for selfish reasons, just because I love doggies and I want to see doggies, I promise. 
<laughs> and Elizabeth said, we are in St. Petersburg. Lydia said, we're waiting to hear back from one of our contacts to see if they're still able to participate, probably a pre-recorded pre reading. Jennifer said, yes, Valparaiso will be using Facebook Live and Zoom for African drummer performance and Nanny's Ark. Is that Nanny or Nanny's? Nanny's Ark. Nancy said, imagine our oceans. A pollution topic. Elizabeth said, all will be giving us pre-recorded content at our request. And Nancy said, they'll be finalizing on Wednesday. Karen said, one was supposed to be a two hour art class, but it's down to about 30 minutes. I loved seeing all these children's author illustrators come up with their little art art lessons between Mo Willems and we've really enjoyed watching Ed Veer do his. Anything anybody else wants to throw out? Is anybody currently doing any kind of digital outreach to promote any clever and unique ideas there to share? Karen said, did anyone see Paige Turner's advertisement on Facebook? I think they did it for the city of Davie here in Florida. It was pretty cool. I haven't, I haven't seen that. I'll have to check it out. Karen said, we're hoping to have a Dungeons and Dragon online program. Very cool. Elizabeth said, we are using Paige Turner's as well as some of our regular performers. Amy said, I was able to get video editing software. I'm going to attempt to make a puppet video to promote summer. Oh, that'll be fun. Um, and Elizabeth said, at least at TBLC has a list of performers offering virtual content. Amanda said, instead of going to all the schools individually and being on their student news show, I'm trying to make a commercial that they would post on the virtual webpage of each school. Oh, very good. Very good. I am um, actually that reminds me I'm one of the administrators on my son's school PTO page and I should probably share some of our local summer reading stuff <laughs> since I can. Uh, Jenny said lots of talk about copyright if we do story times that are not recorded can we use what we would in person? Jenny that's a great question um, and we've definitely had I think every every webinar we've had the last week we've had the copyright conversation come up. There are some running lists and I'm happy to share the one that I've been using, which is a massive Google Doc. Um, it depends on the publisher. And a lot of publishers have relaxed their rights or they've put in different stipulations um, because they realize that, you know, between teachers and libraries that people are just having to do things differently. Um, so every publisher is different about what they allow. Some um, are allowing 
anybody to read it, stream it until a certain date, at which point it needs to be removed. Some have stipulated that it needs to be in a closed environment. So whether that's, you know, like a private Zoom or a closed Facebook group or, you know, a private Instagram page or something of that nature. Um, but they have definitely, copyright is still in play the rules are just relaxed and it's just different. So you'll have to check for each publisher. I am happy to share the Google Doc that I have. Somebody out of Virginia started it and um, it's been circulating around. So people are adding to it um, and it's got the publisher's name, kind of a blurb about what their strictures are and then a link to their page. Um, so you just want to verify too that whatever's on that Google Doc is most up to date. Uh, Nancy said, we are also partnering with Emerald Coast Science Center. We will be in a planetarium virtually. That's really cool. But I'm also, you know, totally uh, into space. <laughs> Amy said, I have no idea what I'm doing, but that's never stopped me. Hey, one of the best parts about working with kids is how many new things that we get to learn as adults, right? <laughs> Karen said, I've tried to email my school contacts to let them know we're going virtually as well as our performers as well, but not much info to pass along. Karen said, we can't record our programs. Jennifer said, we came up with the reading with their pets and used the hashtag, hashtag Barking Besties for our Facebook page and Instagram. We also painted rocks and placed them in different areas of the community for the kids to discover and or exchange with their own. And Amanda said, I make sure the book I'm doing on Hoopla so they can check out the book. I did the word collector, but linked the Obama's reading the book and then me with the craft. And then too, because you know the summer reading is what it is, there's also a lot of, um, which Dolly has brought up as well, that there's a lot of reading material out there that's in public domain. You know, you we've got a pretty good selection of old fairy tales and myths and that sort of thing as well. So, um, you know, checking Gutenberg project and just any anything else that's come come into public domain is also also an option. And going back to the copyright conversation, I just want to make sure I put it out there. I know I've, I've I think I've said it in both of our previous webinars as well. Um, that just because an author gives permission does not mean that they that that is sufficient. Um, there were a lot of authors coming out pretty quickly saying, "You have my permission to read and stream my books," and then their push publishers were like, "Well, hold on, wait a minute, slow down. That's not actually your permission to give." Um, so you just want to double check that if an author has given permission, that the publisher has also given permission or that the author is the one that has that that right to give. Any other topics you all want to discuss while we're together? Any challenges you want to pose to the group to see? To see if anybody can help you work through. Again, I'm happy to unmute. Karen said, how are you going to promote your program since it's all virtual? We have to go through our marketing department. 
And Crystal, I see your hand. I'm going to unmute you. And you are self-muted. Okay. Um, I was just curious as to when you when people say they're doing downloadables, um, how are they like linking those? Where are they putting them and then linking them to for the downloadables? That's a great question. So we have two questions on the table. One is how are you promoting? And the other is where are you putting your downloadable materials? Lydia said, we're hopefully hosting our downloadables on the museum website under our own page. Amy said, I'm going to hope for word of mouth. I'm asking my patron parents to Nancy said, email, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, so the rest of Amy's sentence, I'm asking my patron parents to tell millennial parents to get Facebook. Oh, good. I made a right guess. <laughs> Emerald said, our city has said they can create a website for us to put all things summer reading. We also plan to email Facebook and Instagram. Amy said, it's the only way we can post. Crystal said, we're advertising through lunch pickups. I will say, as somebody who creates social media content, I am a huge fan of Canva. <laughs> it makes me look much more gifted at designing um, digital flyers than I actually am. And um, it's free. You can have a free account. Um, I mean, there's obviously, you know, you can have paid accounts if you want, but there you get a lot for just free accounts too. And I use it a lot when I'm creating for Facebook and Twitter because they will automatically size it to the size I need. They have templates. I can throw in our branding if need be. Um, yeah, <laughs> hashtag Team Canva. <laughs> this is not a paid ad. Um, Jenny said, we're advertising through our website. Lydia said, Canva's amazing. Did my entire capstone for my master's on Canva. It, it really, it makes me look much more talented than I am. Sally, I'm unmuting you. I was going to say, we, um, we went to pay for like the pro Canva one, and then we found out um, we could get a free one as a nonprofit, um, which is kind of like really buried information. So we oh. were able to get one. So that's been really nice. Yay, Canva, love it. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm a huge fan. And it cracks me up because I'll make stuff on it and people will be like, wow, this is this is so, so well done. And I'm like, yeah. it was Canva, totally Canva. <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> I threw in some words, that was it. And I think too, um, you know, daycares are still open. So if you're kind of trying to find ways to connect with families, even though schools are closed and individual daycares might be closed, they have might have made the decision to close, but um, they were never told to that they had to close. And so, that's still a population that is going into a building. Um, I think somebody had mentioned that they were going to do a live story time specifically for one of their local daycares. Um, and I know, I mean, my daughter is still in daycare and her, her ballet teacher, because they do ballet through the daycare, they've been doing private Zoom classes with them at the school. And so the daycares are still Still an option. Crystal said, we'll advertise through Peach Jar before school lets out. 
What is peach jar? Crystal, can I unmute you? Great, I've unmuted you. Okay, um, peach jar is something that our school district uses to send a text to all the families and a flyer can be sent through the text. Um, you just have to have it, have it done a certain way and, and submit it. Most of the time, you don't have to worry too much about the approval. They usually give us approval, um, but they'll send it out to whichever schools we, they, that we want them to. So we're going to be doing that before school is out. But we also just recently found out that Summer Bridge is going to be available to anybody who wants it this summer, So which is pretty much summer school. And so we'll have, I think, Peach Jar during that time as well. But I'm not absolutely positive about that. OK. So it's really just an, a way to advertise to the families through the school district. Very cool. It's great that you have that partnership with your school district. Yes, it took us a little while because that when they first got it, they were charging for anything that got put out to the families. But after a while, we got it organized so that we weren't charged for it. Yeah, I think now, too, is a great time to feed information into the school districts because they are hungry for resources to send out to their families. Um, and I know just here locally in Tallahassee, listening to all of the updates we were getting um, when school was first extended for spring break, because that's how it started for us up here, um, is that the I don't remember her exact. She's like the assistant superintendent for curriculum or something like that. But, you know, as she was talking and giving her speeches, she brought up our library system here multiple times and about, you know, making sure that families are connecting with that as a resource and that they had online resources. And I don't know if that was just something she put out there or, um, I mean, Sally, you would probably know better than I would if that was something that, you know, locally here, the library reached out to them. But it, I I was really happy whenever the school district was plugging the library. Chris said, doing a weekly story time for child care center that is closed, but the daycare owner is still meeting with kids online. I've been doing story time for a Zoom room hosted by the daycare leader. Yeah, well, and Chris, your your county has been hit hard, too. So I imagine face-to-face -face in your county, like some of our, our bigger counties down south, are, is probably going to take a little bit longer to, to come back together. Chris is in Gadsden County, which is north of us here in Tallahassee, sort of north, northwest. Karen said, wish we could do a Disney sing along. I saw the second one on Hulu, but something similar would be pretty cool. We had planned to show movies, but don't think that's possible, is it? Karen, I know that some people are still, um, because of the license that they have, they are still able to do sort of like an at-home watch party. So I think you would just need to check with whoever your licensing is through and find out what stipulations they may have. I agree, though. I've been all about these Disney sing-alongs. <laughs> I'm such a Disney kid. And Sally, we've tried a sing-along, not Disney. It's so hard. It really is. So trying, I think kids have to be the right age um, because, you know, my kids don't get the concept of a sing-along. <laughs> so anytime, you know, I would start to sing along, um, not only am I a terrible singer, but my three-year-old would be like, mommy, stop. I went to hear. And I'm like, but it's Disney. You have to sing. And she's like, no, mommy, no. Um, yes, Karen, I will uh, send out the transcript for today's chat session as well, as well as a copy of the recording. Crystal asked, what is everyone doing to reach families without internet access? 
That is a great question. Sally, I am unmuting you. Oh, sorry. I was going to talk about the, the sing-along thing because we are trying to do a sing-along on Tuesdays um, in Zoom. And we found that because of the lag, like you have to be together and you have to have like all your other stuff muted so you don't hear like the lag coming through. Um, we tried to do it like in separate buildings and it was really bad. Um, <laughs> so it's been interesting, <laughs> an interesting challenge for us. Yeah, it kind of makes you wonder how, you know, all these, like the whole original Hamilton cast got together to do a Zoom sing-along for a little nine-year-old girl. And they make it look easy, for sure. <laughs> Crystal said, I think an interactive movie would be fun if you can ask families to collect items before watching the movie together. Crystal, that was great. The Hamil Oh, I know, I know. It was very much a, I'm not crying, you're crying moment. Amanda said, Hillsborough County is giving free internet to all families, but I've been advertising with the food pickup at schools. Jennifer said, we've had, we've issued blurbs to the local paper. We provided a Canva flyer to be posted on the local cable page. We also provided three hotspots to be checked out for a week. And Sally, I see your hand is up. Was that still up? from before? Probably. <laughs> I keep forgetting <laughs> to put it back down. <laughs> I, I think mean, I feel free it to down. talk. <laughs> is, it, is it down now? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, it's down. I Honestly, I've been doing it, and I think I just shifted so quickly back over. Yeah, it's OK. But I could just keep talking, so you don't want me to <laughs> do that. <But> thank you. <laughs> um. Jenner, oh, I read that. Uh, Crystal said, oh, local cable page is good. Crystal said, we've done the water bill in the past. Like advertised with the water bill? Ooh, can you talk about, Crystal, I'm going to unmute you. Can you talk about kind of what you did for that? Um. We were able to put in, a, in an advertisement. I can't remember if it was something, a blurb in something that they were already printing up or if it's something we printed. I think it might have been that that we did two separate ones and one was one way and one was the other. But um, I think there might have been a slight cost to it as well, which I think is kind of silly, but um, it does reach everybody um, in your area because they all get water bills. So um, I would definitely check and see what their policy would be. Um, like I said, I think one time we we paid to have like a little blurb on something that they were sending anyway. And then another time we just had our own separate paper that went out. That's really cool, very clever. Nancy said, our city has just done a couple sentences about the library event. I know too that, and I know some other school districts are doing this, um, but I know that our school district has set up school buses as hotspots, and so they've spread them out throughout the county. And my son's school is very rural, so we have one sitting at our school. So we have about 13 minutes left. Um, Crystal said any city department that has a Facebook page should also be willing to post for you. Fire, police, et cetera. And I think somebody in, um, and if this was you from last week, I think somebody had also brought up that they were partnering with 
the Boys and Girls Club, maybe? Because they were still going to have a summer program, but it was going to be reduced. Or maybe it was the Boy Scouts. I don't remember. Um, Crystal, was that you? About um, partnering with them to help the kids meet their summer reading goals since they were going to be there, um, having them set aside 20 minutes a day. Um, dedicated to reading so that kids could then fill out their reading log. Um, Crystal said, wasn't me, but we're doing that. Do you want to share a little bit about how you've set that up, sort of the logistics and? Oops, OK. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Listen, the three of you that have chosen to speak, I'm going to put you on the spot as much as I can. <laughs> Okay, um, we have actually our our rec centers are with us together under one umbrella. So our top boss is their top boss. So we've been trying the last few years to work together with them a little bit more. Um, sometimes they would come out to the library for special events and stuff. But we also have been doing Beanstack the last couple of years. And the first year we did, we just did it ourselves and encouraged them to have their kids participate. But last year they actually joined with us in the Beanstack. So they also had programs in our Beanstack um, of platform. So um, they actually provided the prizes and just followed along with what we had set up in Beanstack. So that worked out really well because we didn't have to worry about getting them the prizes and stuff. Um, I'm not sure what we'll be doing this year. We haven't, I, I haven't been at work to be able to f hear some of the discussions that have been going on. I've been at home telecommuting. Um, but we have done that with the rec center. Also, our Boys and Girls Club, they came to us at the beginning of the school year and asked to um, work with us throughout the school year. So we're just going to continue that through the summer. Great. I'm not sure. Do you have, did you have something specific that you... We're no, uh, not me. I mean, somebody else might. I just know that sometimes somewhat, you know, we can hear an idea and we're just kind of curious how to take a first step into, you know, building yeah. that partnership. We did. We've had we've had a partnership with our rec centers. I've been at my library for as of June 1st, um, 19 years. So we've had a partnership. Some years is better than others with our rec centers. But like I said, this year, our top bosses, you know, have been really encouraging us to work together. Um, so, so we'll work something out with them as to how the summer will go. And then the Boys and Girls Club, um, since they won't be able to come to us, hopefully they'll be able to use some of our virtual activities or we'll be able to drop crafts off or something to them and encourage them to continue reading. But I think reaching out to the to the top person at any of those places would uh, and just going in and visiting with them would get the ball rolling for anybody who's interested that hasn't done it before. Hey, thank you for sharing. Um, Karen said, I wanted to have a fire truck at the library, but they don't do that around here. They had it at the library up the street. Don't think we'll be doing the game board. Amanda said, I tried the city and the county fire departments, but neither would participate or send a fire truck. I asked the police department and two captains um, who did rock, paper, scissors on who would read the story. Um, there were over 60 children and we did rounds outside with the police car, police canine and deputies. Then we went inside and the captain read a draft story and explained how to be safe. I mean, so we then did it again in July since it was so popular and it cost nothing. <laughs> Crystal said they should have read the legend of rock, paper, scissors. That is such a great book. <laughs> OK, 
Clarence said, I just saw that at our library story time page. It was cute. Yeah, my son got hooked on that. I think I think we had to check it out about four times before he was ready to move on. So we uh we helped with our with our local library's circulation stats on that one for sure. <laughs> So we're down to about seven minutes. Crystal, I think you just read my mind. Any really good titles that anyone wants to recommend? Summer reading, imagine your story. Crystal said, I love falling for Rapunzel. Karen said, I always love brown bear, brown bear, but I think it's probably fairy tale story, right? So yeah, something within the theme. So that's fairy tales, folklore, myths, three little piggies. Minna said, for Father's Day, I was going to read Dandy. Megan, I love You Don't Want a Unicorn. My students, when I was in school, loved it. Um, Crystal said, I will create a fairy tale version of Brown Bear for my preschoolers. Ooh, share, share, share. Uh, Amy said, oh, I'm going to totally butcher this. Kiko Kazka, lousy, rotten, stinking grapes. Uh, Lydia said, because I want to focus on Florida castles, but didn't find much in the way of kids' books, I decided to write and illustrate one myself. Good to you, Lydia. It's Little Red Gliding Hood. Princess Hyacinth is a fun book. I'm also a huge fan of Interstellar Cinderella. Um, and there was an old dragon who swallowed a knight is such a fun one. I need to just break down and buy that because our library doesn't have it anymore. Oh, and Lydia said featuring Artie the alligator. Um, Megan said, I love interstellar Cinderella. It's so good. And every time I read it, I had at least one mom or grandma or aunt or older sibling come up and just be like, thank you for reading. <laughs> thank you for reading that. Because um, for those who don't know, Cinderella is a mechanic, and that's really just all she wants to do. Chris said, Lion, Lion by Miriam Bush. Crystal said, we will get these. Yes, we're going to download the chat. So you'll be able to go back and see all of this. Um, I, and Emerald said, there's a series of how to catch mermaid, dragon, unicorn. Yeah, I had last week, I had great, um, great intentions of taking notes on a Word document while we were typing, but the conversation was just going so quickly. It was so great um, that me taking notes was just not, <laughs> it did not happen. I think I got a few things typed out. Oh, yes, dragons love tacos one and two. So fun story about that. Um, my three-year-old is not a big taco fan, but they've started reading it at daycare. And so now when we got tacos last week, she was all about actually eating the tacos. So um, appreciate the author for that. <laughs> Crystal said, dragon eats noodles on Tuesdays. See, I need this list just for personal reasons. <laughs> So we are down to about three minutes. Any last burning questions or comments or? Amanda said, with the Younger Storytime group, I have paper clipped pages together from Dragons Love Tacos and the story still makes sense. Otherwise, it's too long. Ooh, that's a good cheat. Oh, y'all are welcome. This is helpful for me too, because it kind of lets me know things to, to keep an eye out for, to send your way.
and you all are going to be amazing. I know it's a, a hectic time and it's a time with a lot of change and a lot of uncertainty. Um, but I can tell you that, you know, just from a mom standpoint, that being able to see these live story times and to see these familiar faces is so important to these kiddos. Um, it will be different, you know, but you know, sometimes different can lead to some opportunities that we may not have had before. Um, Karen said, yeah, I wanted to see the teen one, but this was on the same time as this one. Yeah, well, we're having a teen discussion on Wednesday. Wednesday, I think it is. Crystal said, if anyone wants to chat early literacy, please email me. <laughs> um, yes, Karen, we will uh, record the teen one on Wednesday as well, unless you're thinking of a different teen one. Um, Crystal said, it's a fun summer adventure for sure. Yes, it's um, it it's different for sure, <laughs> Karen. I listen. Between last week and this week, I alone have had five flip related, so I empathize with that very personally, very deeply. Um, but it's you know it's going to be good, and I think that maybe this year because many of us have been sort of forced into some digital programming that, you know, even next summer, if things are, are sort of back to our, our normal norm, um, you know, we may be learning things this summer that we can continue to move forward in addition to that face-to-face. -face. Amanda said, well, no one imagined this summer. What a story we will tell years from now. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I know too, like I have a lot of mom friends who are doing, um, they are doing quarantine. Um, oh my goodness, my brain just, I keep wanting to say catapult and that is not the right word. <laughs> All right, someone give me the word I'm looking for. You know what I'm talking about. Or you put the stuff and you dig it, you dig a hole, you bury it, you pull it up. Time capsule, yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, so that might be something else, you know, to throw out there is an imagine your story time cap capsule activity that could be self-directed. Oh, that's great, Nancy, having kids write their own stories. So it is 3.01, so I'm gonna go ahead and officially say goodbye. I will keep the room open for a few extra minutes in case anybody just wants to get any last little chats in. Um, but y'all have a wonderful rest of your Monday. If I see you at our team chat later in the week, then I will see you then. And of course, feel free to contact me if you need me. Bye, everybody.